So you got yourself a new toy. And your new toy connects in line with your microphone. But there's one small problem. <laughs> the pinout. Or the, con the interconnection. <clears throat> so I had a customer send in a radio and this, which is a 10-tech. If you're not familiar with the logo, it's the two little T's there. But it's an RF speech processor. And you can see this kind of obvious because it has the, the LED meter here. It's a, it's a, a clipper. Um, they're nice little units, well made. Um, and he wants to use this with what I call a black box radio. Now, it doesn't have to be one of these. You can. This is just a speech processor. So it can be used with any kind of radio. A simple, you know, the smallest, simplest four-pin microphone, um, AM-only mobile radio you can think of, up to the most sophisticated, can be used with your ham radio, can be used with anything. Um, but the pinouts are different. Now, from Tentec, you can get adapters. Of course, this is going to be wired for your, uh, you know, this is basically sold for the amateur radio use. So it has your fairly standardized 8-pin mic microphone connector. This radio down here, however, uses a 6-pin jack. Now, this radio, unlike a lot of CBs, um, because this thing is sold as a 10, you know, we'll put that in quotation marks, it's a 10-meter radio. Um, but it's a 6-pin jack on this one. And that's because it also has, because this has a, a digital display. So it's a CPU-controlled PLL in this. So, this has the fancy option of having the, or it's not really an option, but it has the advantage of having, like many ham radios, up and down buttons built into the microphone. So you don't have to reach over to your radio. They're, they're right here if you want to change channels. Um, the downfall of that is, if you want to use something like that with this radio is, how do you connect this radio to this and still retain channel up-down buttons? if you still want to use this factory mic. Uh, because, of course, Tentec does not make an adapter. And ev even the adapters, um, depending what you're doing, the microphone may work, but in most cases, you're going to lose the functionality. So even when you buy adapters for a lot of, from a lot of companies, not just, you know, uh, not just Tentec, but a lot of companies, when you buy uh, something like this, if you get the adapters from them, the only thing they're allowing to pass through is the audio a ground and your PTT circuit, or your push to talk, so, you know, your your microphone, your button. Um, they don't do anything with additional features, like channel up, down, or any other features that might be on your microphone. So, what I've done is, and, you know, you can do this yourself. It's just, it's time, it, it can be time consuming because it's a lot of solder and wiring, making sure everything's, you know, secured, but make up your own adapter cord. And it's going to be an octopus, <laughs> for lack of better terms. Um, because you're going to have, you need to, in, in the case of this radio, you want to be able to use this mic with a six-pin plug on this module. Now, some people might think, we'll just take that jack out and stick a six-pin plug in it. Uh-uh, ain't going ain't gonna to work. This jack solders directly to the, the front board in this, the front circuit board. So that has the drivers for the LEDs, the controls, all of this. And this is also surface mount and design. So both of these jacks mount directly to that circuit board. So it's not like you can just take this jack out and pop in a 4-pin or a 5-pin, or in this case, a 6-pin jack in place of that. The pinout's going to be different. It's just not going to work. There's no easy way around it. So we need to make a cord. Now, And the other problem with this is... This does not have a mic jack output on the back. This unit has that, a phono plug. So just a standard stereo quarter-inch jack. So that gives you three connections. A tip, the ring, and the shield. Um, so you need to adapt, <laughs> come up with an adapter that will allow you to run the audio, a ground, and the PTT into this jack while bypassing it with a wire that comes around to the back <laughs> that has your channel up-down buttons, and if needed, depending on your radio, maybe a receive line, because ham radios usually do not need a separate pin for uh, so you can hear something, you know, hear your audio out of your speaker and receive. A lot Now, this radio doesn't either, but a lot of CB radios do. So you have to have that minimum of four 
you know, audio, uh, ground, a receive, and a transmit switching for the transmit and receive switching circuit. So we need to run that around, pick up the audio, the ground, and the PTT out of that quarter inch stereo jack on the back, and then meld that back together into a plug coming out of the back end that can then plug into this radio. So here's what I ended up making up for this customer. It's just that. So on one end, this end here, we have, for starters, the jack that plugs into the microphone. So the microphone plugs in here. This jack then plugs into the front of the uh, RF speech processor. Now the only thing that's going in, there may be six pins here, but you have to remember, there's only, actually they have four pins that are used on this. They have, because de depending on your radio, whether you have uh, common or ground or separate separate uh, PTT and audio ground. So there's actually two grounds on this jack. They're tied together inside this unit, so you can use either one. But there's only three wires actually go to this plug. Audio, PTT, and a ground. This other wire that comes out, which is actually three wires inside of a piece of heat shrink tubing, they come down, and then on the other, you know, another piece of heat shrink tubing here, everything's together, um, comes down to the quarter inch jack. So this jack plugs into the back of this unit, picks up the audio on the tip, the push to talk on the shield, and on the ring, and in the sh shield is the ground. And then, so that joins the channel up-down buttons back in into this cord then, and then this cord is tied into this one, and then on the end of this cord is the one that then plugs into down here on the radio. So basic setup would be cord in the radio, plug into this, This jack into the back. Then I have this actually so it can, you know, it's long enough that you can just lay it underneath or you can flip it around the side. So however the customer wants to use it. And then the microphone then plugs into this. So that's why I call it an octopus because you've got all kinds of wiring going on. And then now your microphone with channel up down buttons is now connected and all of the features of the microphone work. So you can see the microphone's working. And actually I'd have to turn on all my power strips here. Insulation transformer. Actually the strip was on. Let's see, turn the transformer on. Turn the radio on. Uh, I need to flip on the dummy load. And you can see if I push the channel up down buttons we've retained our channel up down buttons keying circuit works audio radio one two so everything works just fine so if you ever run into and yes this is one of those ungodly noisy radios I don't know how people use these things <laughs> it's got it's got dual fans on the back of it it sounds like you're a, a damn standing in front of a jet engine and then to top it off someone at some point in time had taken the linear power supply out of the inside of this thing and installed a switch mode power supply so there's another fan inside the radio <laughs> but uh so if you ever run into that you end up getting an audio accessory some type you know it doesn't have to be one of these it can be a some type of equalizer you know speech processing clippers limiters filters noise gates whatever it might be there's always a way it's just a matter of coming up and figuring out the wiring, which pins need to go where. You know, so, like I said, you just end up making an octopus cord like this. But in the end, you don't need to, you don't need to change any plugs on this. You don't need to change any plugs on this. And you don't need to change the plug on your microphone. You make this up, and then when you don't want to use this unit, you just unplug it. You can plug your microphone back into the radio. Everything's left 100% factory original. So... There's just a, just a little quickie on, you know, make up something like this. Like I say, it's not hard. Now, make sure when you, if you do make something like this, this, now these wires, there's three wires inside of this red heat shrink tubing here. 
these are just plain wires. There's no shielding because those are just the wires for the push or for the channel up down buttons. This black wire here is microphone cord. It's a five conductor cord with a shield wrapped uh, shielding wires wrapped around the white conductor. So that's for your audio. Whatever when you do something like this, you want to make sure you use a cord that's designed for use with microphones because if you try using just a multi-conductor wire with no shielding what you can end up with is is RF energy you know from your radio from your antenna everything getting back in especially when you're doing processing um, these are also going to amplify your signal you can end up with horrible feedback squeals just all kinds of, of problems can be introduced into your radio system so always be sure you use microphone cords that have sheet you know have a shielded conductor inside actually there's a yeah, little cut off and i just dropped it on the ground there was a piece of it actually when i was cutting it apart so you can see there's the white but you can see all the little copper shielding wires there those were all wrapped around that white wire right there so just make sure you use proper shielded microphone cord when you do that you can get this stuff on ebay um you know, go online, do searches. There's se several several places you can get uh, you know proper microphone cord. Um, but there you go. That's all you need to do to to adapt audio whatevers. It doesn't need to be specifically one of these, but a you know an audio type processing box over to a radio without going through changing plugs and or the sockets on all of your radios and all your equipment or your microphones. You just make up an adapter cord. You retain the factory functionality of everything. That way, like I said, you can just remove this, plug the factory microphone back into this. It's good as new. If you want to use use the clipper, you just install your octopus cord, and now it's in line. So there you go. Hope that helps somebody out. Because I know some people are under the impression you can't use products like this with a radio like this and retain features like channel up-down buttons completely untrue. It just takes a little bit of uh, ingenuitive thinking and some fancy fancy cable work and soldering. That's about it. Um, and when you make these, make sure you put some heat shrink tubing. Actually, I have tape wrapped around this very tightly. It's actually a, a, a fusing tape. And then heat shrink tubing over top of that because I want to make sure this connection is really strong so the wires can't get pulled out. Same thing here. This is actually a piece of ultra super heavy duty it's actually a, a water waterproof type it's a, what they call dual wall heat shrink tubing this is actually what they use on uh, telephone lines um i get get this stuff in really big long sticks they're like six feet long when i get them but uh you can see the in the inside of this stuff has a really thick you know hot melt glue inside of it so you know make sure you got a really good good bond on there so this doesn't pull off same thing when you put your mic plugs on make sure you put some heat shrink tubing or some some type of tubing on here because this cord is is thinner than the clamping range of this the clamp on these microphones which is actually very common so you always want to make sure you basically you're making a bushing out of some heat shrink tubing so you can get a really good clamping force down on that cable so it doesn't get ripped off but uh, there you go hope that helps somebody out so uh, get out there, buy some jacks, plugs, a little bit of wire, and make yourself some adapters.